Some people like them big and some people like them small, but how big should Lego models actually be? Well, I wanted to figure out the realistic size of models. So I took a minifigure and it turns out he's about five and a half studs tall. And it makes sense that he's about five and a half feet. I hope he's not six and a half because that would make him four feet wide. But anyway, if he's five and a half feet or studs tall, then one stud is equivalent to one foot. And that gives us a pretty good measuring system for Lego models. So how do Lego models compare? Well, I'm gonna start with Speed Champions, and don't worry, we're gonna get two trains of boats later, but there's this big debate over six and eight stud wide Speed Champions. Now, starting with the first generation, the six stud wide cars, we have the Mustang Fastback. Now, the real one, it's 6.2 feet wide and 15.6 feet long. And then if we measure the Lego one to see how it compares, we can see it's a little bit too big because it's eight studs wide and 18 studs long. So about two feet too wide and two and a half feet long. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, I thought this was a six stud wide speed champion. It is, but the problem is the body's six studs wide. When you include the fender flares and the wheels, it ends up being eight studs. Now that's just a first generation. If we go to the second generation with a car like the Koenigsegg Yesco, which is eight studs wide, it's a lot worse. The real one is 6.6 .6 feet wide, 15.6 feet long. The Lego one is nine and a half studs wide and 20 studs long. So there's a reason these Speed Champion cars don't quite look right in your Lego city. It's because they're simply too big. Now, if the Speed Champion cars are too big, what about the original city cars from like 2010. Here's a car from the Caravan set in 2012. I decided to compare this car to a Nissan Versa because it seemed about the same, you know, just a small sedan, and it's actually really close. The length is pretty much identical. The width is a foot off. It's a foot too wide, but that's because of the tires. If you switch the tires out for some that don't stick out as much, you can get it just about the same dimensions of a real Nissan Versa with the foot to stud conversion. So this right here, the city car, is the right size. So if this is the perfect car, then why can we only fit one minifigure in the front? Uh, you know, real cars, you can fit two side by side, three side by side, but in these city cars, you can only fit one. So I looked at the actual body shape of the car and it's a little bit off. You can see the tires stick out to the right width, six feet wide, but then the actual body of the car in the center is only four feet wide. So when you measure the car, it's technically correct, but the actual body of it isn't built correctly. Really, a car's whole width should be six feet everywhere, and then the wheels should be exactly that same width. They shouldn't stick out any more than the car. A uh, pretty close example of this is my car actually, the Bumblebee. I measured this car and it's actually the same size of a Mustang GT with about an extra foot of tailpipes on the back. So after editing this, I've actually realized that my car isn't much different than the Speed Champion car. It's just as wide. Uh, the Speed Champion Mustang is still three studs too long, but I don't know if the width should really be an issue because Unless you make like a five stud wide car, it's nearly impossible to get the right width. So the six stud speed champions may be a little more accurate than I said. So if, as long as you have mud guards, it's just gonna be too wide. Unless, like I said, you make it five studs, which is insane. So now with this car, you can actually fit too many figures with the use of jumper plates and tiles. Uh, it's a little squished, but what did you really expect? I mean, they're three feet wide. But anyway, enough about cars. Let's go on to something more interesting, like a train. So I looked it up and a diesel locomotive, at least in the US, is about 10 feet wide. And obviously if you put 10 studs in front of a Lego locomotive, it's a lot bigger. In fact, Lego trains are only six and a half studs wide. Now, I thought it would be impossible to make realistic trains because I looked at the track and they're just not that wide. So to make the train 10 studs wide, it looks really weird with the wheels. But it turns out that's actually accurate because real train tracks are only five feet wide. And so 
if you look at a mock on Rebrickable, this train here is about 10 studs wide, and it's using the normal Lego wheels, and it actually looks just fine. Now, I don't know anything about trains, but I think it's due to this extra stuff on the outside of the wheels, um, and which makes it so it doesn't look like it has undersized wheels. But anyway, like I said, I don't know anything about trains, but it is possible to make realistic trains that are 10 studs wide with the Lego rails. thought that was interesting. Now, boats, on the hand, other hand, they are not accurate. I expected that, but I didn't think it would be this far off. I mean, real cargo ships are supposed to be 78 studs wide. So yeah, they're way off. But I mean, it makes sense. You can't have everything actual minifig scale. I mean, the sets would be like just way too expensive. So it kind of makes sense with Legos that the bigger the model gets in real life, the less accurate it's going to be. So what do you think about Lego models? If you got something to add, you can leave it in the comments below. And you can actually check out my Lego models on Rebrickable. I only have two right now, but I'm working on some more, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching.